This is the Molus X100 from Zhuin. And I can confidently say that this is the smallest light that I own that can competently be used as a key light. Usually when I see really small LED lights that brand themselves as bright enough to be a key, I tend to not believe it, but this Molus X100 changes that for me. For me, a good key light needs to have three components. First, I want it to be really bright, obviously. It needs to be bright enough to key my subject in a variety of lighting environments. Second, I prefer my lights to have bi-color temperature capabilities so that if I'm matching house lighting in any given scene, I'm able to shift the color temperature of my key light to match the interior lighting or even exterior lighting of that lighting situation. And third, it needs to be as portable as possible. Space is so valuable when you're on the go and you're traveling for work, you're doing a documentary gig or a freelance kind of corporate marketing style gig, space is always limited. So I love my lights to be as portable as possible. The Molus X100 excels in all three of these categories. Juen sent me this light to review after I did the review of their Freewell M20C. They liked that review, so they wanted me to try this out and see how I like this light. They have no input on what I'm saying in this video, but there's a lot of positive things about this light, starting with obviously the size and portability. Just to demonstrate how crazy the size of this is, let me show you the carrying case of the X100. This is it, this tiny little carrying case, this light fits in as well as all the accessories, power adapters, etc. the battery, everything fits in this tiny little case. For comparison, the key light that I'm using overhead right now, this is my Godox VL150 case. This thing is massive. If I stick it in front of my face, it literally just takes up the whole shot. You probably can't even hear me anymore. Now I could forgive the size of this case and the size of the light if I actually got a lot more features and brightness out of the light for this size, but that's not the case here. My Godox VL150 is currently shooting at 25% power for this key light scene. And that's typically what I have it set at for all of my YouTube work. So when I got this light, I assumed I'd have to crank it up to at least 70 to 80% power to match the intensity. But it turns out that actually the exact same percentage, 25% power is what I need to output from this light to achieve the same results in the same setting. That just absolutely shocked me. A light this size at only 25% power can achieve these same results. Another thing you get with the X100 that I don't get with my current key light setup is bicolor temperature. If you're ever shooting in an environment where you can't control all of the house lights that are spilling onto your scene. So if you're like in a corporate environment and you have to shoot in like a common work area and there's lighting overhead, sometimes you can't dial in that lighting exactly how you would like and it has to be integrated as a part of your production scene. This is when it's so important to have a light that has bicolor temperature. So you can shift that Kelvin of the light to be able to match the lighting in your scene. I light my studio with Philips Hue lights as well as all sorts of different filmmaking lights. So I have the ability to really control the lights that spill onto my scene here. But when I go out into the real world and do my production work, that's not always the case. So my current key light is really only helpful if I am certain that I can use a daylight color temperature light for my subject. But this light allows me that flexibility to not be locked in at 5,600 Kelvin for the color temperature. And I can lower that depending on the scene that I'm in to like 4,000 Kelvin or 3,200 Kelvin if I'm working in a more of a, like a tungsten lit environment. You also get app support from their ZY Vega app. I showed some of the functionality in my M20C review of the app. So if you wanna check that out, you can. But overall, the app works really well. You can dial in your color temperature and your brightness output, of course. If you choose one of the kits that come with additional accessories, these accessories are really important to be able to modify light and make it a little bit easier to work with. So here's the battery pack. It just snaps right onto the light like this. And now this light is ready to be powered. I can take this anywhere, set it up as a key light, set it up as a fill light, however I wanna use it, this is ready to go. Just to demonstrate how bright this is, I will turn this light to 1% power and hold it like an arm's length away from my face. And it's so bright that I can't even look towards it or I am at risk of like actually damaging my eyeballs. So yes, this is literally 1% power and it's lighting up the entire background behind me. 1% power. This is 100% power, okay? It's literally so bright, my whole studio looks like lit up completely white. Some other accessories you get are like this mini cone reflector that actually helps increase the intensity of the light as well as make it more directional. So this would be a great way to use as sort of a backlight, like a directional backlight. You could even just like put it on a desk and kind of shine a big cone of light towards your subject. Another option you get is this cute little mini softbox. This thing is so cute. I think this would be mostly useful for product placement. So if you're shooting products and you need to have them lit in certain ways, I think this is a great way to soften up the light really quickly. And now you have the ability to soften up that light for product placements or even maybe even as a backlight. I think this would be a great backlight option to just put because it's really not that wide. It's still a little bit more of a directional spot because the softbox is so small, but it is definitely a softer, more pleasing light shining on your subject. And the accessory that I'm certainly most excited about is this Bowens mount adapter. This really lets you just turn the light into more of a traditional light where you can attach Bowens mount accessories to the light. I've 
used this exact setup in some recent YouTube videos because I wanted to test this out for my YouTube studio. I attached my Bowens mount 65 centimeter softbox to this light and used that as my key light for a few YouTube videos recently. I love the way this light performed. It looked really good. And this Bowens mount adapter really just opens up so much flexibility for you filmmakers out there. There's also a mini light dome that I don't currently have, but that's also another really cool option for anyone needing that type of accessory. Okay, that's the good stuff, but there are some improvements I would like to see out of future iterations of the Molus X100 system. First being at around 1% to 10% or maybe 15% power, I believe there is some color shifting that I'm noticing. The reason I picked up on this is because I was shooting on my FX3 and I was only using this light at around 5% power. And I noticed that my white balance just looked a little bit off. So as I started doing some research, I came across this really helpful video by fellow filmmaker who kind of did some testing and noticed these same things. And it seemed like other people in the filmmaking space noticed at between maybe one to 20% power, you might get a a little bit of color shifting out of the Molus X100. So that's just something to be aware of. Another thing to be aware of is just how hot this LED chip gets when the light's on. As I've been sitting here running these tests with you, I can physically feel the heat coming from this LED chip when the light's on. It's literally just the point where it could be dangerous and I'm someone who has two kids and if I just leave this light exposed and they turn it on and they touch it, I'm actually concerned that they could get really hurt, that they can get burned or something from this light of how hot it gets. I also hear the fan kick on every once in a while, but it hasn't been a problem and none of that fan noise has bled into any of my filming sessions. I'd say that the fan on the M20C is actually a lot louder. I hear this fan kick on way sooner and it's way louder. So I've, I have heard this bleed into some, some film sessions before, but never this light. As Zhuin is trying to dial in some of their lighting and become more of a staple as far as manufacturers who provide really high quality LED lights, I think us as creators should always be open to providing honest feedback to these companies who provide us with these filmmaking tools and accessories. These companies really like to listen to their consumers and creators and Zhuin is one of those companies. The slide is not perfect, but it is very, very good and I'd encourage anyone who's just starting to enter the game and looking for a budget-friendly, high-quality, high-output light that does also have bicolor temperature, I don't think there's a ton of options that compete as well as the Molus X100 does in 2024. Thanks so much, guys, for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, feel free to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. We have a ton more filmmaking tips coming on this channel very soon. Thanks so much, guys. Much love.